Hello ladies and gents, Bushman here and welcome back to my channel for another build video. Today we'll be utilising the Toboggan Walker and its huge storage capacity of 200 panels. In this video we'll be taking a look around the base, various operations that the base can be used for and of course how to build it step by step. This base is suitable for solo players, I grinded all the materials solo and it took around 6 hours so it may not be possible in one play session but still possible all the same. I would say this base is more suited to a small to medium sized group due to its respawn and defensive capability. It could also be used as a raid base or defensive proxy base. That being said ladies and gents, let's not beat about the bush and jump straight into it. From the outside then, let's have a look around the base and as you will notice it looks great. I'm really pleased with how it turned out and it boasts massive defensive capability and your hard earned items are extremely well protected. Even a well organised zerg would struggle to fully raid this base. As you can see we have a front entrance there and there's also an entrance at the rear which acts as a hallway right down the centre of the base. We have some barricade walls to protect the middle layer and slit wall panels in the crafting room on the top floor with doors at both ends so you can keep an eye out whilst using your stations. On the roof we'll see four ballistas offering fire support 360 degrees around the base with slanted walls for cover from incoming projectiles. A point to note here is that weapons and guardrails do not count towards your panel counter so you can put as many as you like around the base for added protection and can be used to funnel the enemy through certain points of entry. You don't have to use ballistas of course, you can use repeaters or mini repeaters but can't use rupu slings as I'm sure you're all aware by now. I haven't unlocked the catapult as of yet so I'm unsure if this can be placed on a base but it would be interesting to know so if any of you know the answer please let me know in the comments. Going inside the base then, you'll notice a hallway giving you instant access 360 degrees around with drop boxes for quick deposits which can be later sorted into their relevant places. It's a huge benefit having more than one way in and one way out of your base as you can have the element of surprise by being able to flank your potential attackers or able to escape into different parts of the base. Now Scylla, let's have a look what's behind door number one. This is one of your bedrooms which will be a respawn area. We have a bed and three loot boxes for weapons and armour. It's very important to keep this bed topped up with water to allow you as many respawns as possible and to keep the boxes resupplied with weapons and armour. Now behind door number 2 and 3 which is your main loot rooms which are both separated by walls, roof panels and slanted roofs for added protection then further protected by another wall from the hallway that goes around the entire base. Same rule applies as the previous base, the top loot box is the safest as three panels need to be destroyed to access this box. I don't think I was very clear in the last video as people seem to think all they need to do is break one wall and they they're into the main loop but that isn't the case as I've tested this out. The box at the top cannot be broken from the other side, the panel needs to be broken first. The boxes haven't been sorted out since making this base as of yet so I have loot all over the place. And that's another point to note, my base building videos have been getting around 10k views. So even though I'm saying this is the main loot room, it doesn't mean you have to put your main loot there, mix it up a bit and spread it out as your potential raider may have seen the base before so there's no harm in choosing different rooms for your high value items. Now moving into the next room then, there's another bedroom and four loot boxes for weapons and armour and another bed for respawns filled with water. Moving upstairs to another extremely strong loot room which is protected from four panels at the side and two panels from the roof. The four panels are the two slanted walls that you've seen on the outside and all four need to be destroyed to gain entry from the side. Or there is two panels that could possibly be destroyed from the roof but they can't place ballistas near your base so it would be an extremely difficult shot to destroy the roof and if they did it would be almost an impossible shot to destroy the second roof of this room unless you have been caught out near rocks or a valley. You could argue that this is actually the strongest room in the base.
Moving on to the upper floors then, let's take a look at the crafting room above, which has stomping stations, an advanced furnace, regular furnace, advanced fibre working station, fires, woodworking station and purification station. We have the slip wall so we can keep an eye on incoming enemies whilst crafting and it has two escape doors should you need to get out quickly. Finally then, the roof which has four ballistas and ammo chests next to them. A point to note is the ammo chests don't work as they do on a walker and are generally there for quick storage of ammo and it looks pretty cool also. As you can see I have my windmills nicely spread out so you can move around freely and the slanted walls for quick cover from projectiles. There is also guardrails right around which are placed there again more for show and a bit of a deterrent. A point to note is that they only have 400 HP and are easily broken but are more of an annoyance and can delay the enemy at least. So as you can see ladies and gents it's a fun house and I'm really looking forward to getting a raid capture for you and for the ultimate solo base as well. I haven't got much at the moment so I'm thinking of dumping all my loot in the dinghy base and strolling up to a big clan base in the toboggan and see if they take the bait as it only took me around 6 hours to grind all the required materials to make it. Ok now we've had a look at the base let's get ready to craft it. The base comes in at a grand total of 200 panels and the required materials you will need for this base are 7000 wood, 1600 bone splinters and 800 wood shafts. You will also need the materials for 12 medium boxes at the ready to add your slanted wall panels which come in at 300 bone splinters, 180 stone and 420 fibre. And as usual we will look at the tools you will need to get the job done effectively. The area I would suggest farming is the hard difficulty map without a POI as in theory it will be less hostile. First head to the lava area and start farming your bone splinters taking care not to aggro the crab. Whilst here kill every single Rupu Hazari you can. Not only will they drop wood shafts but they have a pretty high chance of dropping the non craftable rare bone axe which is exactly the same as the advanced hatchet for gathering only more durability. These will come in handy for farming the bone splinters and wood and save your own materials. Then head into a dense forested area and start farming your wood. If you are short on wood shafts at this point you will need to farm a bit extra along with some fibre to make your shafts in the woodworking station above your dinghy. I try and kill as many birds with one stone as possible so if you're well covered deploy your base and get all your stations going while you farm. Yeah it's a bit risky but what's life without a little risk. So on paper then here's what you need. Times one dinghy kitted out with water, armor, weapons for respawns and of course the ultimate solo base on board with crafting stations and plenty of storage for the wood. Place your woodworking station on your dinghy for ease of access if preferred. Times five advanced hatchets, times one pickaxe, times one scythe and times one toboggan walker upgraded to at least tier 1 to be able to pack a base with modules of your choice. So I hope your farming went smoothly and now let's craft the base. Craft a 4x3 footprint like so. Then add wall panels to the sides and front left and right panels leaving a space for doors in the middle. Then fill in the gaps both sides of the base with wall panels for your loot and bedrooms and finish both ends with the doors. Now we will place 8 medium boxes in each room like this. And now we will put door panels right through the centre of the base separating loot rooms and adding more security. Next then is adding slanted roof panels to your boxes to allow stacking and adding honeycomb for protection. 
And once finished, you, ha you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to roof off the entire base apart from the two panels above the front door and rear door. Don't panic here as I will finish off the other two in a second. Now add wall panels around the entire second floor. Now we need to finish off with two doors. Don't ask me why I'm par finishing and moving on to something else. My brain is overthinking things here a bit, which doesn't take much, but don't worry, I get to I will finish it. After the doors are placed, seal with two walls on each side to separate, and now you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to place four medium boxes on the foundations and finish off with roof panels like so. Then we will finish the roof panels over the entire floor. Okay then, so now we have a secure base at this point so you can breathe. If any players arrive, try divert their attention to the empty base rather than your dinghy base with all the materials on. You could even transfer over your crafting stations at this point to the roof, as this will be sealed as we move on and act as a nice diversion. So, jumping to the next part of the base, make foundations 360 degrees around the base and start walling and roofing off and remember to place two doors at the front and rear entrance. That is our easy access hallway complete and will be a potential fighting floor so you could even add ballistas or repeaters to the four corners stacked with ammunition as you will have plenty of cover to burst down anyone who comes through a hole in the wall. Okay now moving up to the roof which is going to become our protected crafting room. Place another two doors either side and wall off with the double slit walls like this. Now we're going to build our weapon platform, so add three roof panels in the four corners as you can see there. Then roof off the entire floor once again, and it's all coming together now isn't it? Then let's add the wall protection to the middle floor loot room. Place a wall like so and angle it in towards the base. 
Now place another wall next to it and do the same on the other side. Now we're going to place another wall on top and angle it away from the base. Not only does this look good, it adds another two layers of protection to that room. Finally, we're going to add some cover to the roof, so in the gaps, angle some walls like this, taking care that the panels are vertical and not horizontal. I had one panel spare, so I placed the roof panel on the crafting station door for ease of access to save using the grappling hook, as you've probably already seen in the video there. Okay, so that's the build complete. It's time to add some finishing touches. Build or transfer over all your crafting stations, Add ballistas to the four corners and if you wish to start adding guardrails around the top roof and the hallway roof you can start doing that and again it looks really good but won't make much of a difference against the knowledgeable player however there isn't that many out there and that's it ladies and gents that's the vault a strong defensive base to keep your wares protected this base should be secured in the lobby in the toboggan and taken out to store your valuables but if you happen to get caught out in the desert at least you now have peace of mind that it's highly unlikely that even a large clan will be able to conquer this bad boy to fully raid this base at the bare minimum keep in mind that a ballista can be placed near or on your base i can't be exact here as there is a lot of things that come into play but being very conservative and if they blow in all the right places, they would need around 54 fire arrows, plus a further 12 fire arrows to blow out your toboggan, depending on what grade and tier it is to fully loot this base. So that's a grand total of 66 fire arrows, which is a hefty amount. A point to note is that using three arrows at a time to burn through walls will take a huge amount of time. It's very rare that people use just three arrows per wall, so it gives you plenty of time to think of a plan of action or call for backup and get some friends spawning in at your bed. So that will bring us to the end of the video, guys. I know this was a long one, but I'm hoping if you made it this far, you enjoyed it. So hit that like button, let me know what you think in the comments, and subscribe for more Last Oasis content. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.